All right, well, it is 6.02, isn't it? So how many people are back? Let's give it a little bit of a check. Mm -hmm. Well, there's still some cameras off here. What do you say, Matei? Do we just I hit think we start? should start Meta. Yeah, yeah okay. Thank you, Matei, for the music. <laughs> Good, so what I want to do prior to starting the competition is just to practice a new applause. Because this Zoom is so crazy. I don't like it when all the people are unmuted and everybody just making sounds and then there's a lot of echoes and stuff. So we figured out a new way to uh, express our uh, congratulations to the uh, speakers. And you can do it in between the talks if you like to. So we're gonna practice it right now. Are you ready? You're gonna do it with me? Yeah, okay, cool. So let's do it like this. We're raising our hands, okay? We'll raise our hands for appreciation. And then we're moving our fingers for happiness. And then we're smiling for the cheer. Yeah. Okay, so everybody's gonna be doing this all the time. We're gonna look like freaks. It's gonna be great. I love it. Okay, so cool. This is the new applause. Please practice it as practice it as much as you can because right now it is competition time. Matei, what are we gonna do next? Yeah, I think we should just start going to the first part of our uh, speaking uh, championship. Uh, so let's put our hands in there as we invite our championship chair and president of Toastmasters Club Ljubljana on our Zoom stage, Tjasha Bercic. Thank you, Matej and Meta. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first online international speech contest. I'm really honored to be your speech contest chair tonight. So I have a question for you. Raise your hands if you are ready for the best speeches for tonight. Yes, are we ready? Cool, I'm ready too. So because we are tight on the schedule, I will gonna be really short tonight. The contest will be fierce because we will have eight speakers from five different countries. Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Germany, and Saudi Arabia. I will also, it will also be fair because we will have five well-trained professional judges. One of them is tie-breaking judge. And I bet it will also be fun and insightful because today's speakers are really one of a kind. All the contestants are ordered in the completely random order. I will not introduce the speakers because this is the rule of the contest. I will only say their name and the title of the speech. We will have two different sessions. In the first part, we will hear five different speeches. And then later on, on the second part, we will have another three speeches. I will explain some basic rules now for the contestants. All the contestants must use a webcam and a microphone to ensure that you are visible and audible while delivering your speech. There is also one timekeeper. It's also named in chat, it's Robert Zrinski. And I suggest 
that all the speakers pay a special attention to him because he has the power to disqualify you. Your speech should be long between five and seven minutes. If your speech will be longer than seven and 30 minutes or shorter than four, than four minutes and 30 seconds, you will be disqualified and you won't enter the game of the winning. So keep an eye, at least one eye on Robert Zrinski. Timer will display the green signal at five minutes and it will remain displayed for one minute. The yellow signal will be then displayed at six minutes and will also remain displayed for one minute. The red signal will be displayed at seven minutes and will also remain then by the conclusion of this speech. Better finish your speech because the timekeeper will not give you any signs when you will reach the deadly limit. Upon being introduced, the contestants must proceed immediately to the speaking position. Timing will begin with the first word uttered by the contestant or any other communication, such as any sound effect. As I mentioned before, we have four judges and one tie-breaking judge, and all of them are members of Toastmasters Club Ljubljana. After each speech, I will ask you, this is very important, for one minute of silence for judges to do their work. So these are the rules, ladies and gentlemen. But before we start with the first speaker, let's give a big boost for all the contestants tonight with a big roaring applause. I declare this online speech contest open. Let's welcome our first speaker tonight. Maria Valpovic. I weep, I weep, Maria Valpotic. I weep symbolically, metaphorically, and physically for more than a year now. Oceans of tears are pouring from my eyes, my heart, and my soul, because there is so much to weep for. First, I weep for humanity. My fellow human being, have we forgotten our history? Did we not learn anything from the fascistic and dictatorships regimes from the past? The atrocities of those regimes are so painfully similar to the situation that's going on today. You just have to read history book and connect the dots. It's impossible not to see that we are moving towards the society of total control, destruction of democracy, and devaluation of everything that makes us human. And all this under the code of the most deadly virus. Yes, the virus exists. I'm not saying it's not real. But the COVID effect does not justify the COVID measures we have a responsibility. Our moral duty to the generations behind us is to question everything. We should question each and every measure. We should not just simply and blindly obey, nor comply, nor acquiesce. Then, then I weep for my friends and my relatives. Some of them have estranged from me a bit since we have different views on the situation. Maybe you will too after my speech, but I don't care. Everything that I am screams. Please look, the emperor is naked. But so many people are still admiring the emperor's clothes because they have the freedom to choose the color of the mask. I don't understand how this inability to see what is so blatantly transparent. And I, I wonder why. Is it because of the fear that's going on for more than one year? With all the bombarding over the media? Is it because the, the one is afraid to be labeled as conspiracy theorist, as you might label me now? Is it because of the false promises like, oh, it's just 14 days? 
oh, just do this and you will be able to travel a bit for holidays. Oh, and I love this. Just test yourself, vaccinate yourself and everything will be back to normal. I don't get this. Giving away our freedom to get it back a little is insanity. Then, then I weep. Oh, I weep so much for my children. No, I'm raging when it comes to children. How painful it is for a mother to know that her children are wearing masks all day in school. Child's brain and lungs, they need all the oxygen they can get. And with this stupid mess, we are depriving them of the most prime and most basic need there is, the air. It's absurd that any, any healthy person wears a mask, let alone children. And all this online learning. And when they go to school, all these stupid rules, dots on the floor, social distancing, Children need, they need connectness, closeness, and playing with others in order to develop normally. And what is done to them today is an outrageous abuse. And I will not say otherwise because it is. And everyone who supports this is, the silence speaks what I think of them. And I don't shed a single tear for those kind of people. But I do share some, do, I do shed some tears. Yes, I do. For the Toastmaster District and International Conferences. It looks like I won't be attending them live anymore. Everything points out that the COVID or vaccination passwords will be required in order to travel. I shall not get vaccinated. I shall not give up my basic human rights. I shall not compromise the integrity and health of my body in order to, to travel. Not even for the sake of the, those great parties at Toastmasters Conference. I could go on and on, but I'm so tired of weeping. My eyes are dry, my soul is wounded and my heart is so bitter. This collective madness is taking far too long now. It seems that we will just slip into a society of total control with all the surveillance that's available at this moment. Ridiculous measurements that change from day to day, constant harassment. Will we, the unvaccinated, will, 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 will we be able to go to work, to go shopping? to go to restaurants, to concerts, or will you just, I don't know. Yes, the future seems black, total dystopia ahead of us. And yet, somehow, somewhere, there is still a little spark in me that doesn't want to give up. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we can still turn things around. We, the people, we just need to forget about all the differences. There are far more important things right now. We should just come together and fight for our freedom, real freedom. If we don't have freedom, we have nothing. We have only an illusion of freedom. I prefer to have the real thing. What about you? I ask you now, all the participants, to give judges one minute. But before that, I forgot one important thing for all the remaining contestants, that you need to pin our Robert Zrinski to see him visual all the time of your speech. Thank you. Mateja, some music. i
time we have a quarrel, it almost breaks my heart. Cause I'm so afraid that we will have to part. Each night I ask the stars above, why must I be a teenager in love? One day I feel so happy. Next day I feel so sad I guess I'll learn to take The good with the bad Cause each night I ask The stars up above Why must I be a teenager in love? I cried a tear For nobody but you I'll be alone Say we're through. Well, if you want to make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. If you should say. Our next speaker is Muhammad Alazini. You are lucky, Muhammad Alazini. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Great. Raise your hand if you have felt unlucky. Now, raise the other hand and clap for yourself because you have managed to get yourself up here. Count this chair, beautiful toss masses and dear guests. Luck is a force that seems to operate for the goodwill or the illness for you. I want you to go back with a little journey. I want you to go look, look, look back to that one time, that one time. You're about to get this opportunity or a promotion and you have worked your life for that one. You just managed and finally got up here. And you get so close and so close and so close, but something happened and bang, you don't get it. And you look to yourself, oh, I feel unlucky. That anger, that anguish, that aggression, you just wanna break something. Go back to that point of time and just think about it. At that point, you're put at this intersection. Where the intersection has two roads. The first one is the U road and the second one is the L road. But before we make a choice on which road do you want to take, I want to ask you one question. Who is your role model? Who is your role model? Personally, my mom is my role model. So before I do something, and or pick a road, I just ask myself, what would mom do? Or what would mom think about me at this point? So right now we're going with the first road. Let's test it out and let's test the waters. You're going with the U road. Now the U road has a lot of holes, but as you look at it, it's a half, half a path. The half a path means that there is no ending, but it's full of so many holes. I want you to look right here. You have the first option, which is crime, drugs, suicide, depression, alcohol. You're looking back at that time where you felt that opportunity got taken away from you and you felt like you had a purpose, but then it got taken away. And then you're falling with depression. You go back at that time where you used to drink over the weekends, everything was good. But then because of that, you're drinking every day because you need to drink the pain away. At that time, you were just doing something very light and you were working because you had consciousness. But for some reason, now you're going with the drugs because you don't want to be conscious and see how disgusting this world is as it seems to you because you feel it's unlucky. You go back and there is alcohol and there's all these ones, ladies and gentlemen. So now, this is the your road. What is the other road? The other road is called the L road and the L road is simply this. This is pretty much where the line right there starts right here. 
all the way, this is the map to good luck. You have strength, you have patience, and you have faith. And with all these three factors, you need to have one thing to be able to enter that one. That is hope. Go back and look at the time where you thought it was, oh, I lost that opportunity. At the time where you stuck at that time, if you had decided to take this road, then you will have developed strength of character. You understood that just because I lost one opportunity does not mean I will not have another. You understand just because there that happened, then I still got time to live because I'm young and I'm still breathing and I still got health and I got people that love me. So right now, I got hope. You go back and you see that right there, you learned one thing. That's a life lesson. That life lesson, you decided to take it and instead of going and taking the U road and just falling down on your feet and knees. So before you pick one of those roads, remember one thing. What would my role model do at this point? Will my role model be proud of me? For me personally, it's my mom. So now I'll take you back to this paradox, that complex that I had back in 2018. I barely told anybody this story. So I, I had decided to go and take on the new road where it's full of holes and has half a path. I was doing drugs, I was doing alcohol, and they had fallen into there because I could not find the key to the second road, which was hope. Because of that, he ended up committing suicide. I had a drug overdose. And it hurts me to say that because I don't wanna to get too emotional with the experience. But at, as the experience was happening, and I was at the ward in hospital, something, at this point, something was telling me there was still hope. I don't know how, but I managed. And I managed to never forget that experience or even remember because it's giving me PTSD. So now I learned from that experience that I don't want to take on the U road. I want to take on the other road. Because instead of just living negatively, living in that road, you can see so much there is. There is hope. There is strength of character. Life lessons, motivation, inspiration, they're all in the same road and they take you all the way to good luck. So let's look at it right now. Are you lucky or are you not? Personally, I am lucky because I've made it this far. You are lucky because we've made it up to this point right here. We've had so many struggles. We've taken on the new road many times. But then eventually, to develop, we realize you were in the wrong because we are a part of this world. We are a part of someone we love, someone we love, that world of theirs. And we are luckily made it here. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look at yourselves right now because you are all champions. You're all lucky because you have made it up here with lessons and with the you road. So next time, you ask yourself and tell yourself, I am unlucky. Think about those roads and take on the new road. Thank you. And here is one minute of silence and music on for the judges.
Angel. Blinker. Paralyzed. Flat on my back. And so our world is built an endeavor. But every man is for himself. Wealth is for the one that wants it. Paradise. If you can earn it. History is the reason. I'm washed up. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on with our third speaker, Dragon Big Chich, Freedom, Freedom, Dragon Big Chich. Thank you, Tiasha. Hi, everyone. How are you today? We're going to speak about freedom in my speech. What is freedom for you? Did you ever think in your life about freedom? Did you ever think how we get freedom? What is freedom? Where is freedom? I was thinking about a lot. So I prepared the presentation in short about freedom. You can see traffic lights here. Did you ever ask yourself about the real reason why they invent it and why they put traffic lights on the world. There are colors, red to stop, green to go. Next question I have about seat belts. Did you ever ask yourself why on earth I have to wear the seat belt when in so many years, maybe never ever, it happened that I had a car crash and I'm wearing the seat belt all the time. The third thing is, you see, did you ever ask yourself, why do we have to have clothes on us? Why, cannot, why can we not be naked? Of course, in the winter, it's cold. We need to wear something. But in the summer, in the summer, it's hot. And why, why do we need to put something on us? We could be free to walk around naked with nothing on us. Now I'm going to give you the answer, only one answer for all these three questions. It's all about conspiracy, nothing else. Now I will tell you about traffic lights. Who invented traffic lights? It was communists. Maybe some of you know that traffic lights were invented by British. But yes, those were British communists. They invented traffic lights so that we need to look into the red light. The red color is the color of communism. So they invented it so that it goes under our skin, into our blood, so that we start liking communism. And the other reason was to take freedom from us. We are free to go anywhere until we get to the red light. We have to stop at the red light. And then we have to wait and think. And then they are sucking our energy because they stopped us. We are not free to go anywhere. We, we need to stop. Who did it? Seat belts. Did you ever think there are not only millions, there are billions of people on the world who are putting seat belt on and on every day, all the time, on, off, on, off. And only few, less than a small percent, much less than a small percentage of population on the world have a car crash. So there's only a few, very little number of people who are saved by the uh, seat belt and all others, the whole world, 
has to have to, to put the seat belt on. Just because of these few who are not careful enough, or maybe they are not lucky enough. That's ridiculous. The third thing is to put on our clothes. And now look, we are dressed. And what is this? This is a prison. We put our body in the prison. We put our body in the cage where we are not free. Who knows how long time ago? Somebody, some, I think it was lizards, you know, you've heard about that. Lizards are those who are creating our, our nature, who are leading us in there, and we are their slaves. So this, we need to do something about that. <clears throat> My friends, I was thinking about one thing. In coming year, in coming summer, we have to organize and we have to fight. We will fight for freedom. We will fight for freedom for two things. One is we will fight for freedom to be naked. We will go into towns. We will put our clothes off completely all and we will be free. Our bodies will be happy. We will be happy and we will, we will sing songs and we will, we will have freedom which we wish to have. The other is we will fight against vaccination. We all know that that's nothing but conspiracy. The whole Corona thing is nothing but a consp conspiracy and we have to fight against it. And uh, they want to lead us. Who want to lead us? Lizards, my friends. Those are who want to lead us, humankind. And we have to fight against that. Also, we have to fight against seat belts and we have to fight against the traffic lights about the traffic lights, very soon we will start destroying some of them because we don't want all these things to take our freedom. At the end of my speech, I want to say something serious. I believe you got the point of this speech. Thank you very much. And one minute for the judges. I really love those hands up more than that. So yeah, big applause for all the, all the people gathered here online tonight. Moving on, our fourth speaker, who is going to be? And the minute for the judges. Yes, the minute. We will wait in the music. We are not moving on. Every night I hope and pray A dream lover will come my way A girl to hold in my arms And know the magic of her charms Cause I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover So I don't have to dream alone We are back. So our fourth speaker tonight, Esther Warburg. Goodbye in Great Me. Goodbye in Great Me, Esther Warburg. Sorry, do I have screen sharing enabled? Well, uh, I don't see anything. Do you have? 
Can you share your screen? I'm trying now. Okay. You should have the option. Okay, perfect. Okay, so can okay. everyone see there's a blank screen right now? We see a presentation. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> then it works. <laughs> Okay. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. It's such an honor to participate in your contest. Full disclosure, this is a speech that I actually gave a couple of years ago, but in looking over my previous speeches, I have found this one to be more relevant than ever at the moment. Now, I have to admit, when I first wrote it, I started by saying, unlike all of you here, I am an introvert whose idea of a good time is being home alone. So I did have to amend that to say, my idea of a good time is being home alone by choice. <laughs> I'm sure you can all relate. Well, one evening a few years ago, I was spending an evening and this definitely includes weekends, the way that I most often do. I worked on my sewing machine for a little while, and then I listened to an audiobook and played a game on my laptop. I did some crocheting, just indulged in my usual quiet, lonely hobbies that make me so happy. Now, while I was sewing and listening and playing and reading in my nice, comfy, kind of cluttered bedroom, an 18-year-old girl was huddling out in the cold in a park. She couldn't go home because her father had kicked her out, so she stayed there all night. The next day, a friend of hers called my colleague and asked if we could do something to help her. Our first suggestion was that she go to the women's shelter, but she couldn't do that without filing a, re a police report and she didn't want to do that. So the next move was just obvious. I scrambled to get a fresh set of bedding and towels from my well-stocked linen cupboard. I went and reheated some dinner, put it back on the stove, and soon she came over, I was able to spend the night. Thankfully, the next day, her father calmed down and her mother gave her the all clear to come home. But oh, that experience shook me. I have food enough in my pantry to last for days. I have far more spare bedding and towels in my closet than my two bedroom apartment could ever hold the guests for. Here, this is where my screen sharing, sorry, it's a little awkward now, but. <laughs> During this time of pandemic, I was able to use my, ex my spare time to renovate my balcony and make a lovely seating area. So even when I don't go out, I still have a place to enjoy the sun. And yes, all of this is handmade. <laughs> this is the yarn that I own. And that's not even the fabric or all the tools that I have. How can I possibly gripe about slow internet or these tiny little first world problems when there are people who have actual things to complain about. As tough as this year has been, when I think of all that I have been blessed with, how can I help but look on the bright side? You know, if you look at what you actually have, as opposed to what you don't. And let's try doing that. For instance, tell you what, raise your hand if you've got a well-stocked wardrobe of clothes. 
Go ahead, raise your hand if you would say you have a pretty good stash of clothing. Raise your hand if you've got food in your pantry and your kitchen. Raise your hand if you have a place to live and a means of transport. Look at that. Do you know that statistically, you are among the world's wealthy? You're wealthy in comparison to what the actual majority of people on this planet have. You know, you get quite a different perspective on things when, for instance, you use your smartphone to text your friend and say that you found a humorous way to cover up a water stain on your bathroom wall. And then she texts back and she says that she's on the island of Dominica and she's distributing water purification systems because a category five storm ripped nearly every roof off the island. Off the island. Kind of, you know, balancing things out a little, doesn't it? Or say for instance, I grew up with family, friends, and colleagues who were kind, honest, gracious. Meanwhile, a friend of mine lived with me for three months because her alcoholic father used to beat her. Now, yes, this year has been incredibly tough on all of us, but here we are able to communicate, able to reach out to one another through technology. We have been blessed to go through this tough time with each other. Now, in my personal view, I am trying, I'm striving to give thanks in everything. I'll never get 100% on that, but I am at least hoping to graduate from this life with a passing grade in it at the very least. So goodbye, ingrate me. I won't miss you. Thank you. And music. And we are back for the very last contestant in the first part of speech contest. Our last speaker in this section is Sanya Dudic. Everything can be watched. Everything can be watched. Sanya Dudic. Oh. I was trying to cook and look, I made a mess again. 
with this flower. I, I but water company works only for me and only for my needs. You know, I'm lucky because of that. Because I create so many mess around me, but not intentionally. So is it clear? Not intentionally. So things just are happening. Let me tell you a recent example. A few days ago, you know, I was trying to do something for my for myself. And we ladies, we like changes, right? Particularly when something special happens to our life, and mostly if stuff affects our emotional state. So it happened to me. And what do we do? We attack. And where is the first attack? On our hair. Not brain, but hair. So I decided to attack my hair. I called my friend Senada to come and to diet. She came and then we started with the ritual. You know, first coffee, some drinks and sweets and so on. And after sometimes I start feeling that my head is itching so badly. I didn't know what's wrong. I told Senada, what's wrong? It's itching. It was like it's burning, like someone threw acid on it. She said, no, Sanya, don't worry. It's like regular stuff. It's normal, you know. But after two minutes, I couldn't stand. I just ran to the bathroom. And luckily, I had the water, so I washed it. Then we realized what was the problem. Instead of using hydrogen with six percentages, we use 12. Yes, 12. Can you imagine? I know that you boys, you don't understand what I'm speaking about, but you ladies, and particularly blonde one, will understand and you will empathize with me. 12% is so strong. It can burn your skin and we put it on my head. As I said, luckily I had the water, so I wash it. But fellow Toastmasters, what would happen if I will not have a water? I will burn my head, definitely, yes. And life is easy when we have a water for those washable things, for washable mess. But the problem is when it comes to something that we cannot wash. Tangible things are easy to fix, but intangible, they're hard. What we'll do with harsh words, inappropriate behaviors, or discrimination, or assault, or pain, inappropriate behavior, or any kind of inappropriate action. Those are hurts. And we can be hurted by those stuff also. But fellow Toastmasters, the good things that there is an easy way how to fix it, how we can wash it, not with the water, but we can use something different. We can change our attitude, stop hurting someone, because if we feel that something is not good for us, so why should we also present it to the other person? We can also apologize. It's very easy. Since a change in our attitude, so fellow Toastmasters, we should think more carefully what is washable, what is not washable, what we can fix on easy way and for what we know we need some more stuff. So don't be harsh, be polite. Do to the others the stuff that you would like to get also. And like Matea say, also, he wrote on this message, save the planet. I would add, save the planet, not only with this washable stuff, but save the planet with our empathies 
and with our attitude and positive actions. And then we can be always happy and not to worry whether something is burning our head or our heart. Thank you. And let's start some music. Put some sunglasses on. Putting our hands up and give applause for the five amazing speakers. Before we proceed tonight, I have a special thing to remind you before we start our workshop tonight. So everybody, please grab a piece of paper and you would need a pen also. So this is really important, a paper and a pen. How easy it could be, right? Are we ready? Who's ready? I'm ready. My, back, my word back to you, Toastmasters. Hey, 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 so are we hearing each other loud and clear? Yes. Yay. <laughs> How was that? Excellent. Such excellent speeches, such excellent speakers. I can't wait to hear the second part. It's not over yet. So don't, you know, stop looking for more words. I want to just quickly go to a breakout room right now because I think all of us need a chance to talk as well. And at seven sharp, we are starting the workshop with Lario, okay? So uh, is everything ready for a breakout session? Gregor, yes. We're just gonna take uh, four minutes, I guess. Let's, let's give it four minutes so we all have a minute to come back and start the session with Lario, okay? Okay. 